uh, so in the preceding module, what we have seen is that there is this object called minimal polynomial and we have also outlined at least in principle a way to obtain this minimal polynomial. So just to quickly recapitulate, we saw that there is this object called the annihilating ideal okay, of an operator. Was it this way I denoted or with a bracket? It was in the bracket. It was in the bracket. Okay, no problem. So it's the annihilating ideal of A, all right? And we saw that we obviously we saw what the definition of an ideal was and we saw that this ideal is indeed going to be non-empty. We at least justified it when A is a linear operator over a finite dimensional vector space. Then we saw that there is this object called the minimal polynomial, okay? So the annihilating ideal is an polynomial ideal, okay? Precisely those polynomials where if you pass on the argument A, it reduces to the identical zero operator, all right? And then we wanted to take a look at some other kind of related ideals, which is where we defined, what was the subscript here? VI, right? And again, bracket A, right? Yeah. So then we took a look at these objects, okay? These are, this is also a polynomial ideal, as we have described in the previous lecture. Only that, now we look for what exactly? Those polynomials which if you pass A as the operator, A as the argument of those polynomials and they act on the vector given by VI. So this VI comes from the vector space V on which this operator acts, right? So if that polynomial, that matrix polynomial, okay, acts on VI, then the VI definitely belongs to the kernel of that matrix polynomial, which is to say that it reduces to zero. All right. So it's a collection of those polynomials and we saw even that constitutes an ideal. And then we said that look, by considering a particular basis of the finite dimensional vector space that is V and you look at the annihilating ideals for individual elements in that basis, okay? So you'll have N such annihilating ideals. And then we said that for each such annihilating ideal because they're polynomial ideals, you're guaranteed to have what? A single generating element, right? Because every polynomial ideal we have defined is, we have, or we have proved rather, is a principal ideal. Polynomial is a principal ideal domain is what we have seen. So therefore, every polynomial ideal has this unique, now when you want to impose uniqueness, you say unique monic polynomial which generates the entire ideal. And that is called, now this, leads to the minimal polynomial. I suppose I had put a subscript here. And this leads to the minimal polynomial with respect to VI. Now, apparently from the que queries I received at the end of the previous lecture, it seems there was a question about why the polynomial that we obtained for this indeed turns out to be the generating element. So let's just quickly recapitulate how we went about generating this given this. What did we do? We took the following set. We said we look at I acting on VI, then A acting on VI until at most, at most A to the N acting on VI. And we said that we are going to be adding one at a time. We will terminate this as and when the set fails to be linearly independent. So at most you will have to go as far as this. If it's worst case, you have n vectors in n dimensional vector space, all of which are linearly independent. The moment you add the n plus first vector, it is guaranteed to be linearly dependent. So at most this, but you might have to terminate before, even before this. The moment you lose linear independence, you truncate it there, and then you go and seek that particular linear combination of the fellows which reduces to zero, non-trivial linear combination. And the corresponding polynomial is what you label as this. Now, why would that be the minimal polynomial or the generating element of the ideal? If, on the contrary, there was a polynomial of degree lower than that, which would have done the trick, then you would have had linear independence lost before that point. So by the very manner of our construction of these objects, we have ensured that we will stop exactly where it is of the least degree 
and we know that the generating element is that element which is the least degree polynomial sitting in that ideal, in the polynomial ideal. So by definition itself or by our very construction itself, the way we are going about defining these objects, they will indeed turn out to be the minimal polynomials of these ideals or the generating elements of these ideals. And then we said that if you look for the least common multiple of mu a v1, mu a v2, so on till mu a v n, then this becomes the minimal polynomial. And we approve this, right? So the one hitch probably was why this turns out to be the generating element of the minimal polynomial. I hope I have clarified that. This result we approved, right? We take the individual minimal polynomials for each individual element in the basis, stack them up together, take their LCM. Once we have taken their LCM, then that becomes the minimal polynomial. We have shown that this divides this and this also divides this. That was our uh, path towards showing that this equality holds, right? Any questions on this? Yes? So after we found the first, uh, the point where it becomes linearly dependent. Right. There we truncated. There we truncated. The corresponding polynomial. Yeah. Was said to be the? Yes, the minimal polynomial for this ideal, the generating element for the ith such ideal. Uh, so could you give a reason for you So I said then that by construction is going to be the least degree polynomial in the ideal. And least degree, I again, just to again to clarify, there was another question, why do we not consider constants as the generating element? Well, if you consider the constant, then that ideal is basically the entire ring. If you take one or two or five as the generating element of an ideal, then you multiply any polynomial in the ring with it and you get the entire ring back, right? So that's trivial. So we are not interested in that boring case. That's why we talk about the least non-zero degree polynomial sitting inside the ideal. And that will basically be the generating element, yeah? So now what I'm saying is that we consider and we keep hitting it with A, the operator A, as many times as required in order to lose linear independence, at most you have to go up till this. So this algorithm, if you think of it like that, is guaranteed to trunk. Any self-respecting algorithm should have a stopping criteria. Otherwise, it's not even an algorithm, right? So uh, at, at, at the kth stage, probably, k less than or equal to n, you should definitely encounter a situation where this has lost its linear independence. At that point, you truncate it. So you basically then have some linear combination alpha, uh, alpha naught i, plus alpha 1 a plus dot 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 till alpha k a to the k acting on v i. Let's call this k i. All right. This will be 0. And then we will claim that alpha naught plus alpha 1 x plus dot 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 till alpha k i x to the k i is equal to mu a v i x. And we say that this is not just the, I mean, one of the polynomials, but this is the generating polynomial. Because if you want to contradict this, let's assume that there is a smaller degree polynomial than k i sitting inside this. If that were true, then it turns out that identically, there is a linear combination of i a a squared till that lower number, something lower than k i, say k i bar, that vanishes. It means that you have actually not detected linear independent, uh, lack of linear independence and you have still gone on to increase the degree meaninglessly. Because the algorithm is such that it will stop the moment it loses linear independence. First. So you could not have, yeah, the first time you lose linear independence, you don't go any further beyond that. So if you had lost linear independence for some value less than ki, then you should have stopped it there itself. So the, the, the idea of this being the generating element or the minimal polynomial of the uh, annihilating ideal is embedded within the manner in which we have constructed this, right? All right, so what I will do now is I will take an example, a numerical example to also illustrate this. I'll take a matrix A, a three by three matrix, and show you how exactly we'll go about this business of obtaining the minimal polynomial. So let's say A is 1, 0, minus 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. Again, don't ask me why I chose this. I have checked that this is going to make my job easy. 
in general obtaining the minimal polynomial is slightly more laborious than obtaining the characteristic polynomial okay. So now first thing what I have to do is I have to choose a basis it's R3 so I need to choose just three elements in a basis let us choose E1, E2, E3 so let the basis be 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0 and 0, 0, 1 okay. So first I will try to look for the minimal polynomial with respect to E1. So this is E1, this is E2, this is E3, all right. So let us look at the set that I am constructing now. So I acting on E1 is just, sorry, E1 itself. What is A acting on E1? It is just going to pick out the first column. So this is E1, this is A E1, this is 1, 0, 1 and what about A squared E1? It is just A acting on this fellow, A acting on this fellow means it is the sum of the first and third columns of A. When this fellow acts on A, I mean I am just flipping the question, when this fellow acts on A, it just adds the first and third columns of A, right. So that is just 0, 0, 2. Is it still linearly independent? I mean I am putting the brackets so I am just telling you it is not. Can you check that whether this is linearly independent or? Yeah? Why? <laughs> so what do I do in order to prove that it is not? Right. So then what is the linear combination that sort of nullifies this? So 1 times E1 plus, no tell me this one first, minus A E1 plus half A squared E1. So what is then the minimal polynomial for this annihilating ideal with respect to E1? This leads to mu a e1 x given by half x squared minus x plus 1. I do not like to keep the half because I want a monic polynomial. So let us multiply by 2. So this becomes x squared minus 2 x plus 2. Okay. Let us just change this to e2. I will just erase this and make it e2. What is A E2? It is just going to pick out the second col column, right? And the second column is again a repetition. So it is even easier. You see why I have employed all my cunning in choosing all this, yeah? So of course, what is the polynomial? So it is basically E2 minus or rather let us put minus here and plus because I want a monic uh, 1 times A E2 which leads to mu A E2 given by x minus 1, right, yeah, okay so far whatever calculations we are doing is fine, okay. Let us change it to E3. What is A E3? It is going to pick out the third column 0, 1. <coughs> All right. What about A squared E3? This is A E3, of course. What about A squared E3? It is just the difference between the third and the first column of A. Right? You agree? This is minus 1 times the first column plus 1 times the third column. So if you take subtract from this, if you subtract this, this follows polarized, this is minus 2, minus 2, 0, 0. Is it linearly independent anymore? <laughs> yeah, it is just a change of signs, right? So what should our uh, sort of 
equation B here. Yeah. So let's say one times E three minus one times A E three and plus ha ah, plus half times no yeah because you have to now that you have taken a minus 1 this becomes plus 1 so you have to retain this sign so plus half times a squared e3 is equal to 0 which leads to mu a e3 of x given by again the same as the first case right x squared minus 2x plus 2. So by our derivation then mu of a should turn out to be the least common multiple of x squared minus 2x plus 2 x minus 1 and x squared minus 2x plus 2. Is there a common factor between these? If there are then of course we should not just multiply them in order to get it is just like numbers. If you have 2 and 4 then the least common multiple is 4 it is not 2 into 4 8. But is this sitting inside this well just put in 1 here you know it is not because it would have been x squared minus 2x plus 1. So then this and this have nothing in common in the language of this we will say they are co prime co prime polynomials no common factor. So therefore this turns out to be just x minus 1 multiplied by x squared minus 2x plus 2 which is given by x cubed uh, minus 2x squared minus x squared minus 3x squared right. Please check my calculations I have not bothered really to be very uh, 2x 4x plus 4x minus 2 okay. So this is the minimal polynomial at least for a matrix case we have computed but it is not for nothing that I have certainly grown so interested in computations. I also want to drive home a more important point through this apart from just illustrating to you how you can go about the business of obtaining the minimal polynomial of a matrix. What is that? So observe something just for the sake of it because we know how to do it. Let us just check out what the characteristic polynomial of this fellow is right. So that is a determinant x i minus a right which is determinant x minus 1 0 1 0 x minus 1 0 minus 1 0 x minus 1 right. So let us just expand by the first row it is x minus 1 times x minus 1 whole squared and nothing else right so let us get rid of this bracket then okay okay plus 1 times 0 minus or minus so it is plus right so x minus 1 so again I can get rid of this what is this going to turn out to be sorry have I missed something just a minute Is it coming out to be the same polynomial? Yeah, because you can take x minus 1 common. Yeah, because there is a plus sign. Okay, yeah, yeah I, 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 my bad. So this is just x squared minus 2x plus 2. So the point is the minimal and the characteristic polynomial appear to be the same in this case. Is this just serendipity? Have I done something very tricky, something very clever here in my choice of this matrix that this becomes equal? Or is it just a some general property? Is it just indicative of some general property? Yeah, because we have not uh, really uh, seen any reason why this determinant which comes out, out of nowhere, not really nowhere. Yeah, because this is actually going to tell you the roots of this polynomial is going to tell you what the eigenvalues are, right. So what is it that is being indicated at through this? So mind this observation here, just this calculation bit. Hmm. And what are we going to conclude from this or rather not from this but at least what does it lead us to conjecture. You will see shortly it is not just a conjecture but it is actually a result. 
So what is that result? It is as follows. So again the usual you have A which is a linear operator on a finite dimensional vector space all right and suppose chi of A is the characteristic polynomial of A while mu A of x is its minimal polynomial okay. So we know now each of those terms what is a characteristic polynomial, what is a minimal polynomial. The result is this okay. What am I saying? Roots of the characteristic polynomial without counting the multiplicities. Yeah. So if there are multiple roots, you just call them as one. But like in a set, if you have multiple elements that are identical, you don't label them as different objects, you label them as a single object, right? So the roots of chi A are the same as the roots of again. So these are equal in the sense of the set, right? Yeah. So these are two identical sets. If you are repeating them according to their multiplicities, then they need not be equal. Although in our example, it turns out to be exactly the same. So we are not claiming that mu A is equal to chi A. As, as what the example suggests, we might have been bold enough and claim that this is always going to be equal, that is unfortunately not so. Okay. But there is some relation between the minimal polynomial and the characteristic polynomial in that if something is a root of the minimal polynomial, it must be a root of the characteristic polynomial and if something is a root of the characteristic polynomial, it must be a root of the minimal polynomial. Right? What are the roots of the characteristic polynomial called? The eigenvalues. Therefore, the minimal polynomials roots can be nothing other than the eigenvalues either. They cannot have any root other than whatever is the eigenvalue and also if anything is an eigenvalue, it must be a root of the minimal polynomial which means that if you have not added the factor x minus lambda when lambda is an eigenvalue, right? then if, the, if, the poly, if a polynomial, if a candidate polynomial does not contain x minus lambda, it certainly cannot be a minimal polynomial. right? So it works both ways. So in the next module, we shall see a proof of this claim.